Okay, so it's Sunday afternoon at the Moporium. I have been busy, although this is usually the sort of time I'm busy doing my own stuff, but here I am. Uh, I've got all the handlebars stripped off the Honda PC50, which was a joy to do. Did that yesterday evening, and they were seized on there. Uh, so that was nice. Anyway, I've wire brushed them. A really good clean enough to get rid of all the flaky rust, and I've wiped them down with panel wipe uh, to get every trace of grease off, because I think the owner would put every trace of grease that he had on there to stop them from rusting. All that waxy stuff that was on the frame, and they want the handlebars as well. And they will be going in here I went out this morning and bought the biggest container I could find that would fit the handlebars without having to completely fill it with around about 20 litres of uh, electrolyte. Uh, and this is a planter. Uh, in there is some distilled vinegar. Yeah, not the ones with the uh, kind of uh, seasoning in, this is just distilled white vinegar. And also, uh, some Himalayan pink rock salt. It was the only salt I could buy that didn't have any kind of additives in it, like anti-clumping agent. Unfortunately, I think it's made electrolyte like go pink and not blue like it's supposed to. Uh, there and there are my nickel plates to make the solution. And then when I got to plate the handlebars, I'll be swapping that one there with the handlebars and putting a couple of new ones on positive terminal. Right, I've got the handlebars in. Unfortunately six and a half litres of uh, white vinegar wasn't enough to cover them. Uh, I'd at least like to have got up to the stem but there we go. Uh, my power supply for this experiment is the old Halford's 12 volt battery charger. Just old transformer and rectifier type. Um, not one of these fancy microprocessor control ones because they will not work when you try and do this. Anyway, no idea how this is going to work. I've only ever done electrolytic rust removal before. So this is kind of new to me. I've added an extra sacrificial anode. So I'm getting a lot of fizzing at this end of the bars, but not end of this end of the bars. The sun is going down, so it's got to be uh, around about six o'clock. Uh, let's take it off and uh, take a look, shall we? Well, you can't quite tell if any nickel's been deposited on it, but when you get to the point where this part wasn't submerged, you can see a line there. So this has definitely had nickel plated onto it. This part hasn't. Same goes on the other side, there's a line there, and this bit has a plate and applied to it. Uh, this was too badly pitted, I think, to actually be worth chroming, um, especially the expense of getting it chrome plated. This is really just an attempt to preserve it. So I'm going to have to get some more white vinegar tomorrow, uh, so I can top the tank up, so I can do the whole of the bars, and uh, get some more nickel plates as well. But uh, yeah, for a first attempt, uh, I think it's gone okay. And this is my solution to my electrolytic solution issue. I said solution too much then, haven't I? Um, I added some more vinegar, but I also filled the bottles of vinegar up with water uh, to allow it to displace the amount of solution in the tank. Uh, Archimedes principle, I believe. And that has managed to cover the handlebars up to the stem, which is okay because um, chrome on the stem is fine. All right, it is 25 to six in the evening. And this has been on the go all day. Let's take a look at it. Well, for the first attempt, yeah, not that bad. Not wonderful. Not as good as I thought they'd be. Still a patch of us there. But the other side is fine. Well, you can plate onto rust, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think these a good wash off now to get rid of the acid on them. Well, considering they started out a little bit like that in places, uh, they now look like this. After I've given them a bit of a rub down with one of these sort of wire cloths, my brass brush. Um, the only thing with these handlebars is they're full of holes for the cables and things. If they were normal handlebars, I would have plugged the ends up to stop any fluid getting inside there. But uh, trying to get that out is a nightmare. Um, it is coming up quite nicely though. Um, especially around here, where it was a little bit rusty before, it's not so bad now. Okay, so it's took about five minutes for some brass, so we're giving a little bit of a polish up. And they're not looking too bad. Uh, you can still see pitting on there. Around here. Uh, be interesting in the morning to see if there's any rust appearing where the pitting is, because there's every indication there that the plating hasn't like, kind of reached those areas. Uh, around here is still not very good. Um, but, uh, what I'll do is tomorrow, I think I'll get the polishing mop out with my... Uh, different grades of polishing compound and see if I can make it look a bit better. So it's officially Sunday morning and therefore it's a week after I started this science experiment. I'm happy to say 
that no rust has appeared overnight in any of the pitting. So it has indeed plated it. But what I try and do is the old aluminium foil trick. Now you can use plain water for this, but I usually find something acidic works best, either lemonade or cheap Coca-Cola. And all I've got is three-year-old scrumpy. I've actually been banned from making scrumpy now after a bottle exploded at 2am and shook the whole house. Shame really, because it tastes really nice. I've been trying to concentrate on the areas that have still got the worst amount of kind of pitting on them. I must admit, if these had been regular handlebars, we could just clamp them on. Um, I wouldn't even bother doing this, I've just got a new set of bars. But these are specific to the PC50, and you can't buy them anymore. Um, I don't have much choice but to try and restore them. I must admit, this scrampy smells lovely. Reminds me of those cider apple lollipops used to get back in the 1980s when life was simpler. So the aluminium foil trick seems to have worked its magic. It's looking a lot better now, particularly around here, which is still quite badly rusted and pitted. Got a bit of a shine to it now. I must confess I actually used this method all those years back when I first had the biking for a tidy up. Uh, but you've got to stay on top of it, you've got to keep polishing and protecting the, the finish afterwards because it's not a permanent fix. As you can see, I've been busy polishing. This is my polishing kit. It's a mixture of stuff I've got off the internet, some parts like stuff in there as well. Uh, I'm using this old drill because you've got two speeds and it's not a variable speed, so once you pull the trigger in, it stays at that speed. Uh, and the thing is, this mains powered. Makes a bit of a whine, so you can wear ear defenders. Anyway, um, the bars themselves have actually come up quite good. You still see the pitting on them. I think uh, the owner's going to have to keep polishing them because I'm pretty sure this rust is going to come back at some point. But uh, yeah, I'm pleased with that. This is about as far as I'm going to go with the handlebars. Uh, I think I've managed to bring some of the shininess back to them. Um, cost wise, it was £7 for 10 litres of white vinegar. The salt was a pound. And these nickel plates uh, were £6 on eBay. This is why they're called sacrificial anodes. It's because they essentially dissolve as the nickel gets transferred over to the part that you're plating. So I'm quite pleased how this side of the handlebars turned out, uh, mainly because this was the worst side for pitting and missing chrome, but also it's the side that you see the most of from a riding position. Uh, if you're seeing this side of the handlebars, you're in the wrong place, you need to get out of the way. Uh, would I do it again? Uh, probably not handlebars, it's been a bit of a faff to be honest. Uh, probably have a go at plating smaller parts though. Uh, but anyhow, every day's a school day. Uh, with that, um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have done, please press that little button down by there. And to all you new subscribers, much appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so, because that would be freaking sweet. Anyway, see you again soon. Take care. If you're going to build a Tomo Special, you need to build a special engine.